Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Hard Count podcast. And today, we're going to be talking about some guys that I really think you should not be drafting this season in fantasy football. If they fall to you, their current ADP, definitely not worth a draft. Maybe take someone else that's going around in the same range. So yeah, I've got six guys for you guys today. So let's get started with my first guy that is on the do not draft list for wide receivers for me. And that is Keenan Allen. Always been a guy that's pretty consistent fantasy wise, um, pretty consistent production. Not been a guy that I've always been the most, not been someone that I'm always super excited to draft every year, but does put up pretty solid production. Uh, last season, I would say it was relatively disappointing. Um, not terrible, but pretty inconsistent. Putting up four, you know, he would put up four one week, next week put up 14. But as a guy you draft high-end wide receiver two, like last year you would have drafted him as a high-end wide receiver two. I think that's pretty disappointing for his season. You don't want a guy like that putting up so much inconsistent numbers week to week. Um, uh, we know the Chargers, they lost Phillip Rivers this offseason. They got Tyrod Taylor, new offense. And I think Taylor will start week one for the majority of the season. I'm guessing Herbert will come in sometime in the season, but I'm just going off the basis that Taylor is going to play nine, 10 games because I think the Chargers will be more successful with Taylor in. But, uh, you know, last season, Tyrod Taylor played weeks one to five, 12, 13, and 15. So I kind of use that to gauge maybe what Keenan Allen is going to be like this year. And if you take out the outlier week of 30 points, which you might see, think is unfair, but you, I, I think it's fair because you can't just count on a 30 point week. I think that's an outlier and it's okay to take out outliers. Um, and Keenan averaged 9.4 fantasy points per game in standard leagues, which isn't awful, but it is not a guy that you're looking, is not the production you're looking for from a guy that you're taking as your wide receiver too. Maybe wide receiver one, if you uh, wait a little bit later to take a wide receiver. But I mean, I think it's been a trend throughout Tyrod Taylor's career as the wide receiver one in offenses run by Taylor. Um, they've a- they've averaged 7.34 fantasy points per game in recent memory, his years in Buffalo. Not very solid. Also over those three seasons, Buffalo, with the exception of 2015, where Simi Watkins was the leading pass catcher, the leading pass catcher in those offenses were tight ends and running backs, Charles Clay, Shady McCoy, both great pass catchers. They took up a lot of the targets in Buffalo. And I think this is very similar to this Chargers situation. Pass catching tight end Hunter Henry will take five, six receptions a game at least. One of the better pass catching running backs in the league. Austin Eckler, six receptions, seven receptions per game at least. And I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this stayed the same even, even more because really considering how often the Chargers checked the ball down, fourth highest rate in the league uh, last season. So I expect a lot of receptions to end up with Hunter Henry um, and Austin Eckler. And we again, we've seen the trend throughout T- Tyrod Taylor's career that the wide receiver one doesn't put up great fantasy production. So that is very interesting to me. Definitely something to look out for. Uh, not to mention also Keenan Allen sharing the field. Another great receiver, Mike Williams, who will suck up a lot of targets. If you're in an offense that I think is go- already going to be uh, not the most pass happy offense in the NFL. Um, I think you really want your guy to be the main target. The guy's going to be getting all the receptions. And I think you're going to have a lot being sucked up by Mike Williams, a lot from Austin Eckler, a lot from Hunter Henry. That's something to be concerned about for Keenan Allen. Right now he's being drafted ADP of 52 in PPR leagues, 53 and a half and half PPR in standard leagues. Sorry. Um, Vicinity of guys like DJ Chark, Robert Woods, Terry McLaurin, who all in my opinion have much more much much more fantasy upside than a guy like Keenan Allen so again we've looked at the trend through Tyrod Taylor's career the wide receiver one in his offenses have tend to tended to struggle in terms of fantasy Uh, Taylor often favors tight ends running backs that are pass catchers which the Chargers have both and uh, I just don't see Keenan Allen really boosting your team up or really, I think he would definitely be a big disappointment for you. So don't get stuck up on the name. Keenan Allen, elite NFL receiver, but his current situation doesn't make him viable for fantasy purposes. So Keenan Allen is definitely a guy I'm staying away from in my fantasy drafts and somebody you should stay from as well. Stay away from as well. Next, we've got AJ Green. And really, are we doing this again? Currently going off the board, wide receiver 28. How many times are you going to do this? 
I don't think we really have to explain too much here, but people are going to say, well, Spencer, when AJ Green is healthy, he is such an amazing player. He's such, so great. And I agree. When he's on the field, he is a very good player, pretty solid fantasy player as well. That's like telling me that Josh Gordon is a great fantasy receiver when he's not suspended for drug usage, which is like always. So it's just kind of like at this point, what are we, what are we drafting him for? He's far down on my list. Uh, because of injuries you're drafting a wide receiver 28 that's a low end wide receiver three I just can't see myself picking up AJ Green again same thing as last year he's been sidelined in training camp with a hamstring injury Uh, and again wide receiver three a guy that's regularly going to be in your rotation guy that you're considering playing in the flex every week or in your wide receiver spot every week And if that guy isn't available, that's a huge issue. So, you know, again, and yes, if AJ Green is healthy, he will maybe make up for that wide receiver 28 spot you drafted him at, but he's not going to stay healthy. And again, even if he plays, it's with a poor offensive line, rookie quarterback, who don't, we don't even know how well Joe Burrow is going to perform with a new coach, an excellent, an excellent slot receiver in Tyler Boyd, who will get a lot of targets this season. So just do your I don't have too much to say about AJ Green do yourself a favor there's guys around him that are gonna be much more consistent options at the wide receiver three spot so again do not pick up AJ Green do yourself a favor yeah now that we got that out of the way let's move on to my next guy my third guy on this list and this might be a surprise to some people Mike Evans now I think Mike Evans is concerning to me he was again we know very very good fantasy season last year um currently going off the board at the three two uh you know two three round turn so very interesting there you're gonna have to maybe use a second round pick on mike evans i'm not saying that mike evans is bad but again using a late second round pick to an early third pick on mike evans i really am not looking at paying that price for him right now and again Mike Evans, very good season last year. But my concern is that the things that made him so successful, what really he fed off of in Tampa Bay and and really boosted his fantasy production, I don't think those things are going to be as readily, plentily available there for Mike Evans. And one of these things is the deep ball and the amount it is being thrown. And I'm not hating on Brady's arm either. Like, I think Brady can throw a pretty good deep ball still. Um, not Not great, but not terrible at all some people think his arm is useless i think that's completely untrue but uh again so you know i have some concerns for chris godwin as well who is in that same offense and did use some of the you know get some of those deep targets as well but mike evans saw eight percent more of his deep targets down the field than godwin and 1.92 deep targets per game last season which was tied for fifth in the nfl and James Winston led the NFL with 99 deep attempts. Tom Brady, on the other hand, threw 62 deep balls, which is, again, significantly less than James Winston. Uh, yes, this was in New England, and I think that the Buccaneers are going to throw the ball more than in New England. There's, you know, again, they have the deep threats to do so, but I, I don't see... Brady throwing the ball nearly as many times down the field so you know this Buccaneers team it's better than it was last season and again that's a that's a good thing for the team as a whole good thing for Brady good thing for everybody but it's not better for Godwin and Evans in terms of fantasy production because of the fact that you throw much more down the field when you are down the last season, the Buccaneers were trailing for 535 of their offensive plays. On those plays, they threw the ball 70% of the time. And they were winning on 401 snaps, where they only threw the ball on 52% of their plays. That's a huge difference. That's a lot of opportunity that is lost when you're throwing the ball 18% less of the time. So I'm guessing the Buccaneers are going to be winning a lot more this season than they were last season. And if that's anything, to t- if that tells me anything, it tells me that the Buccaneers are going to be running the ball a lot more. You still have Bruce Arians running that offense. And yes, the quarterback has changed, but the principle of we pass a lot when we're down and we don't pass as much when we're up is still going to say 
relatively consistent no matter who's on your team. Another thing that I think impacts um, that impacts Mike Evans is the fact that Gronkowski is there. And yes, I'm not expecting New England Patriots Gronkowski. I'm not expecting Gronk to be a touchdown machine or anything like that. But Cameron Brait, OJ Howard, Gronk, they're all, they all provide a lot of value in the red zone for the Buccaneers. And Gronk and Tom Brady, that's what they've been doing their entire careers, throwing to each other in the red zone. So I think he's going to be a big red zone target for Brady as they, again, they've been doing it for years. So that's definitely a threat for both Godwin and Mike Evans. I'm worried about some of that, those touchdown numbers going down because those red zone targets, even if Gronk only plays situational football, he only plays on certain downs, definitely the red zone would be those downs that he would play. So I I could expect a drop off in touchdowns there. And so, yeah, just to recap, um, I cannot see myself taking Mike Evans at the three, two, the two round two round three turn, because I think there's guys there that really provide some more value to your team, guys that have more upside and really could push your team over the edge. Taking Mike Evans isn't a championship move, in my opinion, because that what really made him great, those deep balls getting down the field, um, the touchdowns, they are in jeopardy this season. With Tom Brady, the new offense, the additions of Gronk, they've got that solid tight end trio. So as much as I love Mike Evans as a receiver, second round, second, third round pick, big price to pay for a guy with so many, so many uncertainties. We don't know how he's going to be this year, such as Evans. So I would not draft Evans this season in fantasy as I don't think he will return that th- round three pick two value. Next, we have DeAndre Hopkins of the Arizona Cardinals. And again, DeAndre Hopkins, amazing receiver. These guys that I'm saying, just because I'm saying they're going to disappoint in fantasy doesn't mean I think they're bad receivers. I, I think DeAndre Hopkins is the second best receiver in the NFL. So um, I think we all know this offseason, DeAndre Hopkins traded to Arizona for David Johnson. Arizona clearly wins this trade. Nothing can go wrong. Uh, He's going to be the number one pass catcher in an offense with star rookie quarterback Kyler Murray. Does that sound familiar? Last year, we saw a trade that involved Odell Beckham Jr. to the Cleveland Browns, where everyone thought that nothing could go wrong as they had star rookie quarterback Baker Mayfield, and Odell was the number one option on that offense. And I'm not saying the situation is the the exact same, but it's still something to be interested in, intrigued by, something to question because we've seen some star receivers in recent years to really struggle to transition, even when you think it would be seamless. So that is definitely something to look out for. I'm not ex- I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not expecting uh, a guy you're drafting as wide receiver six to drop all the way down to wide receiver 29 like Odell did. But uh, there still could be some reminiscent things of that. But DeAndre Hopkins has been a pretty elite fantasy wide receiver for the entirety of his career. Wide receiver won in 2018. Um, But I think a lot of that has been really dependent on the elite volume. He gets year in, year out in that Texans offense with Watson, Will Fuller always off the field. Nobody else really taking up those passes from Hopkins. And Hopkins is really the only major threat underneath, was the only major threat underneath in Houston. And among receivers over the last three years, Hopkins ranks first in targets, second in receptions, third in receiving yards, fourth in receiving yards per game, and first in touchdown receptions. That's a lot of, that's hard to keep up if you are looking at fantasy wise. I don't think he's going to be able to get those first in targets anymore, second in receptions. I think, I don't think that elite production is going to be sustained this year with Kyler Murray. Um, Yes, Kyler Murray is great, but he had also had Deshaun Watson last season, so I think he actually downgraded at quarterback. Um, Also, in that he's also in that Cardinals offense last season, where the targets were very evenly spread out through the field. Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, each getting 100 targets, and I think this is a good thing for the Cardinals offense. But and they will also be utilizing Kenyon Drake a little bit more in the passing game on pace for 70 plus targets in 2019. So 
Kyler Murray is really spreading the ball around, and that's not something that Hopkins is as used to. He's used to maybe Will Fuller getting a deep shot or two in the uh, in the game, but now we're going to be seeing a lot more receptions being spread out through the field, and Hopkins isn't going to be able to rely on that elite production to keep up his fantasy numbers, and he's not a guy that's going to get a ton of deep balls down the field or anything. So I think he loses a lot of his week-to-week consistency here as he's not going to be getting those same amount of targets every single week as he did in Houston. So, uh, again, with the Cardinals running s- well over 60% of their plays with at least three receivers on, on the field, really, again, does concern me because I expect Hopkins to lose around 20, 30 targets this season, which is definitely a big concern. It's a big drop-off in terms of uh, receptions and targets. Right now, he's going off as the wide receiver five in redraft leagues. And I'm taking a few guys, multiple guys below Hopkins, over Hopkins. He's not in my radar until about a round later than his ADP currently. So for me, it's a no for DeAndre Hopkins. And then next, we have a guy that might surprise some people. We have DK Metcalf of the Seattle Seahawks. And I think, again, this might be a little more bold. I know people love themselves, some DK Metcalf. I think the current hype is a little bit out of hand. We all know he's a freak athlete, but that doesn't always translate to fantasy success. But Metcalf currently going off the board at wide receiver 16, puts him at a, as a mid wide receiver too, if you could not tell. Um, I think there's a couple things wrong with this picture though, because Tyler Lockett, his teammate, is going off the board at wide receiver 20, four spots lower, than DK Metcalf. Low end wide receiver two, high end wide receiver three for Tyler Lockett. I don't really think this makes too much sense. Assuming really nothing too much has changed, Tyler Lockett is still the guy for Russell Wilson. He's the connection that they have. The best connection of the last couple of years, quarterback, wide receiver, arguably. Uh, and Lockett last season was on pace for that, wi- was on pace for a wide receiver one finish. He ended up finishing at wide receiver 14 spot which was still pretty solid but there were some weird injuries along the way some time he couldn't play but uh i think lockett to me should still be going up on the board above metcalf he led in receptions points per game last season and again yes metcalf freak of nature absurd athlete but people are acting like metcalf finishes a wide receiver two or wide receiver three this season and he's poised to break out when really if you look at points per game numbers he was on pace to be a wide receiver five last year, the wide receiver 41. So I I mean, here that, that tells me a couple things. One positive, and that's there is definitely room to improve. Yes, we expect some targets towards Metcalf this year in Seattle. We expect some more targets towards him. Um, but also tells me that Metcalf could get all those extra targets, get all those extra targets, get all those... Uh, you know, improve. He could, he could improve and still not repay the spot that you take him. So, I don't see the huge upside because you're basically relying on him to greatly, greatly improve from last season, just to repay the draft value. I don't see the big upside here for DK Metcalf at the current position you're drafting at. Now, if he's a couple rounds lower, then maybe you know. But the fact that he's above Tyler Lockett, uh, in the middle of some guys that. I think are much more consistent. They don't have any as many concerns for me. Um, also, the Seattle team, very run heavy as well. 54% of plays are run plays, sixth highest rate in the NFL. And I just can't see Metcalf getting some of the elite opportunity that the guys that are drafted in similar ADP at similar ADPs um, are getting. So I think there's just not nearly as much uh, certainty with DK Metcalf as you've got guys like Tyler Lockett around him and some other guys like that um but ADP wise there's guys like Adam Thielen who's gonna who I think has a lot of upside for me in, in as the wide receiver one offense where he is the main option without digs uh guys like DJ Moore real, really solid threats their only threat at receiver in their offense I'd rather take those guys and DK Metcalf, who you're relying on a big jump in production that I think is a little uh, too optimistic. And I don't see the huge upside like I do for some other guys in that range. Um, yeah, 
So again, I like the guys around DK much more than him because I can count on the opportunities being there. And I don't think that's the case with DK Metcalf. Now, next and last, we have Cooper Cup. Going off the board as the wide receiver 17 is Cooper Cup. Definitely a guy that I'm a little bit concerned for in 2020, as you can tell on this list. His teammate, though, Robert Woods, one of my favorite picks this year in fantasy at his current ADP. I'll get to that in a future video. Um, right now, Cup is just trending downwards, in my view. Rams seem like they're set on a, using a lot more 12-man personnel, one running back, two tight ends, two receivers. That's what a 12-man personnel is. Uh, as the Rams, after trading Cooks, they're left with two two real str- starting caliber receivers in 2020, which is that 12-man personnel has really favored Robert Woods in those splits. And the Rams last year only ran 12-man personnel on 14% of snaps, but some reports have said that maybe we could see somewhere close to 50%, 40-50% of the snaps being used in 12-man personnel. And those splits really favored Robert Woods over Cooper Cup. So again, that's a huge thing. He Cooper Cup isn't going to be the main target in those circumstances, it looks like. So I don't think we can really expect nearly as great of a season from Cup. Also, I expect the touchdowns to regress a lot from Cooper Cup last season. He had a total of 10 touchdowns, second most by receiver, and he did this on 16 red zone targets last season. So that is very solid, but Rams tight end Tyler Higby, very involved, I think is going to be very involved this season as well. And this really concerns me because we, I think it really could hurt Cooper Cup's touchdown totals this year. Tyler Higby last season caught 14, yes, 14 red zone passes last season, led the league for tight ends more than George Kittle, more than Travis Kelsey. Um, but what comes out of this? Three touchdowns. Three touchdowns. Cooper Cup scored 10 touchdowns on 16 red zone receptions, and Tyler Higby scored three on 14 receptions. That tells me a lot because I think Higby is poised for a lot more touchdowns this year, and Cooper Cup's rate is definitely going to go down significantly. So I do expect some regression from Cup in that in the touchdown department. Not to mention Robert Woods ranked 25th in red zone receptions while he only ranked 59th in total touchdowns, which is extremely rare. And so you can expect Robert Woods and Tyler Higby's touchdown totals to go up and Cooper Cups as a result will go down. So not to mention the last five games of the season, we saw uh, Cups saw six, four, six, four, and 10 targets which not very solid. We started to see him getting targeted a little bit less, was disappointing in those last few weeks. So right now, Cup is going off the board as a mid wide receiver two and still could be a decent asset to your team. But again, that wide receiver spot is a high price to pay for Cooper Cup. Uh, So I don't think he's even the best fantasy option on his team. There's a lot of guys that are around him that I'd rather take. But yeah, that's why I've got Cooper Cup on this list. And yeah, that's the video. Those are some, those are, my six guys that I would try to stay away from in fantasy football this year at the wide receiver position. So yeah, thank you guys so much for listening to another Hard Count podcast and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.